Greetings, I'm Ms. Kingsley, and this video is to go over problems from third grade, Mountain Math, set five, and it will be problems 13 through 16. So remember the idea here is that you are to um, do these problems first before you watch me do them so that you can see whether or not you got it right or get smarter by learning from your mistakes. So here we go. This is problem 13 called Pumpkin Heights. This is what we call a line plot. So a line plot is a way of capturing a lot of information. In this case, it's telling us, it's giving us data on a bunch of different pumpkins. So each X stands for one pumpkin. And this X means this pumpkin was 10 inches tall. And it's asking how many pumpkins are taller than 10 and three quarters inches. It's a little blurry, but that's what it says. So each X stands for a different pumpkin. It is a different pumpkin. So there are one, two, three pumpkins that are 10 and three quarters inches tall. Now it's not asking us that, it's asking how many are taller than 10 and three quarters inches. So we don't get to consider those. We need to look at everything this side on this line plot. So I'm going to put a circle around this area where all of these pumpkins would be taller than 10 and 3 quarters inches. So now to answer the question, we just count the number of X's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the correct answer is 11. 11 what? Say it out loud. Pumpkins. Yes. 11 pumpkins in response to our question, how many pumpkins are taller than 10 and 3 quarters inches? Write a question using the data from the graph. Well, you can write your own question, but I'll get you started. So I would say, how many pumpkins? Now you can say um, are more than or less than? So I'm gonna do a less than or less than. And then I would pick one of these heights that they've already given. And then you would have to figure out how many X's stand for the pumpkins, which are shorter than that, okay? Less than that tall. So you fill in the rest and answer your own question. Great. Okay, we're gonna go on to number 14. Okay, so for number 14, it's giving us this picture up here and it's asking us to find the area and the perimeter. Well, it tells us the area. So I know each of these are the same every week. On this one, it tells us the area. And let's just go over area, the formula for area, length times width. I often make a cursive L to distinguish it from a one. So length times width. An area, remember, is the amount of space a flat surface takes up. So we're going to put in 30. Now I ask my students to label answers. So this would be 30 square units. They don't tell us if this is inches or feet or what it is. You can also write it this way, units squared with the superscript two. Now perimeter is uh, where we want to know the distance around a shape. So if we start in one corner and we go around this square, this rectangle, excuse me, what would be the total length that if you were a little teeny robot and you traveled around or you were a dog traveling around a yard like some of our teachers talk about, um, then uh, you're going to have to plus the sides. But we only see one side, so what do we do? So here's my, my rectangle, and they give us a five here. Now, instead of calling that an X, I'm gonna call this a A, just so we don't confuse the X with the time symbol. 
So we need to know two more sides. Well, if it's a rectangle, if this side is five, what do we know this side is? Say it out loud. Yep, five. Okay, if this side is A, then we know this side is, say it out loud, A, whatever A is. We don't know what A is yet. So this is called a missing side length problem. And we're gonna find A because we know area and we know one side. So watch how this goes. We have area equals length times width, and we know area is 30 square units, which is equal to, we'll call uh, A our length and five our width. So this looks like 30 equals, what number times five is equal to 30? Well, we could skip count by fives and see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I'm at six fingers. So this is 30 equals six times five, which means our missing side length is that. It is six. So now we know all four sides and our perimeter is equal to adding up all these four sides. So I'm gonna add them up over here and have six plus five plus six plus five to get my total perimeter. <clears throat> you could add this on your own. I'm gonna see how many of you see a 10 in there, which makes it easier to add. I'm gonna point it out. There's my 10, my five and my five, and my two sixes, two sets of double facts here, which makes it nice. So I have 12 plus 10 that I'm now adding, and I get 22. So my perimeter is 22, and this is just length. So length is measured in units. Could be inches, could be feet, could be meters. So we have an area of 30 square units and a perimeter, which again is the length around, of 22 units. Okay, let's move on to number 15. Number 15, we have a word problem here. So on 15, uh, let me get this lit up so we can get better. Okay, uh, we'll just hold this paper, sorry. Here we go, almost there. Sorry for the delay. This is what you learn when you're doing videos when we haven't done them for a long time. Okay, Rob built a dog run for his new puppy. The length was seven meters and the width was three meters. What is the area of the dog run? Okay, well, again, um, we know area formula is equal to length times width. So we could just figure this out by reading the length and reading the width, but I would very much um, like you to also draw this. So my equation, they want to write the equation and solve. So I'm going to start with my unknowns, area equals length times width. But I am actually going to do a little drawing of um, the dog run. So if it's a length times width problem with the dog run, then I have a length of seven, and it's seven what? Did you, did you pay attention? Say it out loud if you did. Yep, seven meters, and the width, it is three, three what? Meters. Okay, so my equation that I'm gonna solve down here is area is equal to seven meters times three meters. So my answer to this, I have to know either my threes or my sevens. Seven times three is 21. And again, you need to label this, and it's either square meters or 21 meters squared with a little two superscript. Okay, let's go on to problem 16. Okay, 16 asks us to look at this shape, and uh, this is um, Quite a challenging problem for a third grader. So to help you out, I made this shape in a real 3D form. Oop, there we go. Okay, 
So hopefully that helps you tell what that picture is trying to draw since it's drawing it on a flat surface. And the first thing to know is what is the name of that shape? So I help my kids remember this by thinking about if you turned it this way and held it up, you could put ice cream on top and you have a cone, which is our shape. So we're gonna write cone here. And now we have to decide, is our cone, is it two-dimensional, meaning flat, or is it three-dimensional? That is why I made a real one for you, because you can see it is not flat. It is three-dimensional. And they're trying to show you that with this little dotted line that goes here. So that is their attempt to draw this kind of on its side or standing with not being able to see the bottom, okay? So we're gonna go over here and circle solid in 3D. Now, number of faces is very challenging with a cone because people get that very confused. Faces is how many flat surfaces there are, not how many surfaces there are. So the only flat surface in the cone where you can lay it flat is the base and that is one. So the answer to this is one face. Now it asks how many edges. So edges in a three-dimensional shape is where two flat surfaces or two faces come together. Well, since we only have one face, the answer to this is zero. An example of an edge, I brought you over a cube, would be a little big here. But on a cube where uh, this flat surface meets this flat surface, that right there, that's what we call an edge. But this cone doesn't have any edges. So that's zero. And then number of vertices, vertices are like the pointy parts, okay? And there's only one pointy part on a cone. Lastly, if you can read it, it says circle all that apply. Is it a parallelogram? Nope. Is it a quadrilateral? Nope. Is it a rhombus? Nope. Is it a polygon? Nope. Okay, so we are in good shape for knowing um, more about a cone. So hopefully you just got smarter. Um, so that is the end of our video for Mountain Math for today. See you next time.